Hey, good morning and uh, welcome to the Sparks Family Homestead as I'm switching names over from uh, Fruits and Berries Homestead now to the Sparks Family Homestead and I'm sort of excited about that because my son and daughter-in-law are headed this direction and um, we're all going to be working together and I am thrilled at the prospects of what the future entails with the grandkids and with my son and my daughter-in-law Caleb and all that's going to be happening here come this December. Sometime in December they'll be arriving from, uh, from up north, uh, meaning uh, the Pacific Northwest, okay? And uh, so anyway, uh, what I am really wanting to talk to you now about is I'm in the garage, so let's call this garage chit chat. <laughs> uh, it's about 10.55 in the morning and we've had a huge uh, weather change here in northeastern Tennessee. And uh, actually, if I was going outside right now, I'd want to wear a sweater. It's, uh, it was, let's see, at 6 this morning, it was in the low 40s. And I don't even think it's gotten to 50 yet. I could be mistaken. I just stepped outside, but it was very brisk. Uh, no, hardly any clouds outside. Uh, beautiful blue sky. You can see the Smokies, uh, the Appalachian Mountains, that is, uh, right right up the road over here and it's just really beautiful. So I'm in here where I don't get the breeze and I got the garage lights on to videotape. Uh, I plan on uh, cleaning the birds right behind me and you can see, let's see, right there. That is the brooder. That's a hatching time brooder. I've had it since March. Uh, and I've used it now for five different hatchings that I've done with the incubator. Actually, I have two different incubators right now. I've got a uh, uh, Nurturite uh, 360, and I don't like it. <laughs> I just don't. And uh, everybody has very positive uh, ratings on it. And God bless you all that have the positive views on it. Uh, for some reason, maybe it, maybe it's just my environment, uh, the weather, or maybe it's just a bad it was a bad incubator. But my hatch rate has been very low. I I have recently in, uh, have purchased a Brincia. Uh, the what's I cannot remember the, it's a 56EX, there, gee, I thought I was going to lose it there for a second. 56EX, and uh, so it's the larger one, and my last hatching uh, was incredible. Uh, and so, it, I, it was not a, a big hatching because I didn't put a whole lot of eggs in there. They were my own eggs from, from our setup back behind me here. Uh, but. I think out of the uh, 10 eggs, 10 or 11 eggs that I had in there, uh, we, we actually had eight that uh, hatched. So that's a really decent hatch rate. And, uh, and out of those, the eight that have hatched, apparently we're missing one. And I might have made a mistake because there's clear plastic doors on the brooder there. And I do remember, you know, a week and a half ago, I was cleaning underneath there with their poopy, or actually not underneath, but inside. And I just wonder if I didn't close one of the plastic doors tight enough and one of them got out. And it could be, I don't, it would not have survived. So whenever I do a thorough cleaning in the, in the garage here, I'll probably discover something, unless a snake or some, type of animal. I would hate to think one of our dogs develop it. <laughs> but uh, I feel uh, it's really sad, you know, when you lose something like that and you've worked hard to, to be able to create, or not create, but to have, have the blessing of uh, these little cute things hatch. And then to see one just being destroyed because of its curiosity. And that's really sad. 
Uh, but we do have seven, and it appears that the bulk of them are female. Uh, they all have the spotted on their, on their chest and everything, and that's what I really wanted. Uh, and I will tell you this, I chose only the most rounded quail eggs that I knew that, you know, with because our rooster was in, you know, we have a rooster in each section there. And uh, I've been told that if, if the quail egg is very rounded where the pointy end would normally be, but if that is not pointy, but it's more of an oval shape or almost a round type of egg, that would be a hen. And if it's more pointed, and a lot of our eggs are very pointed. It's almost like a torpedo. <laughs> torpedo coming out of their rear end. Uh, those would be roosters. Well, I didn't cho choose any of those, and it appears that maybe I was lucky or with whatever, but I think almost 100% of our baby chicks behind me here uh, point the right direction, I mean. <laughs> um, I would think that I'm very fortunate because they appear to all be females, which will in, uh, increase our egg ratio. Uh, we're averaging, uh, for sure, every day 12 eggs a day. Uh, and every other day we get 13 because one of the hens likes to sort of like lay every other day or they take turns doing that, but we're guaranteed a dozen a day right at the moment. And because we sell our eggs to two different uh, market, country marketplaces uh, here near where we live here in the country, uh, the, sometimes it's, it's okay and other times we don't have enough eggs to fulfill the needs in the mark, you know, with uh, Troyers. It's called Troyers uh, Country Market here in northeastern Tennessee. And they are in Limestone and Chucky. Those are the two cities. Uh, that were near where we live. Uh, Johnson City would probably be the, uh, ten Johnson City, Tennessee would probably be the biggest uh, city near us. And we're also, uh, you know, just for a country city, uh, our town of Greenville. So anyway, I am going to do something here. And that is Sunday, this coming Sunday, these baby chicks will be three weeks old. And it's not freezing outside, even the weather. It's, it's, a, it's a gorgeous fall setup here in northeastern Tennessee. The leaves are starting to fall, trees are turning color, and it's just breathtaking. Uh, yesterday, I couldn't believe it. It's like you could just reach your hand out and touch, touch the Appalachian Mountains. They were, it seemed like they were that close. Actually, I can get into the mountains from our front door in, in our vehicle within 20 minutes. So we're, we're pretty doggone close uh, to the mountain range here. Anyway, uh, they need to be transferred into one of these two sections. And if I turn this way, there you can see the one, that's the first, I call it number one section with the two layer cages. In the middle is the brooder that I'm talking about the baby chicks. And then the other one is the uh, second layer section. I want to clean both of those two big layer sections. And uh, I'm going to do, I, I might do two of them right now. And then on Sunday, I'm going to, I'm going to take, here I'm going to show you. I uh, let's try to make this. I'm going to bring it right over here. I can, okay, and, oops, that's me there. Here we go. Okay, it's not important that I'm in the video, but there's only two hens and one rooster in this entire section with no dividing walls, okay? So they have the free range of all of this here, okay? I also have a LED light uh, in each section and they get about 14 hours of light, and then every night it goes off at eight and comes back on at, at I think, six in the morning. Anyway, that's how I have this timer set up. Same thing down here at the, at the bottom one. I've got uh, two hens and a rooster. Well, they're both jumbo Egyptian quail, uh, and so they're all from the same bloodline. So I, I wanna take 
these birds and put them ultimately with every, so we have them all in one section. But, but the problem is, here and I'll chat with you here. The problem is, is uh, two roosters, they may compete and may not be a good, good jive. So I'm going to pause here just for a second and I will uh, get right back. Okay, so here, here's a better view. And I've got the larger bottom uh, that you would normally use for chickens on these uh, hatching time cages. And it's really good because these are jumbo quail and they have larger poop than the regular standard quail size. So the poop easily goes down. You don't see a whole lot of poop or mess on, the, on their plastic floor in there. Same thing with up here. It's, I've got the larger, I have no dividing walls, and uh, huh, it's picking at the light up there. Anyway, so anyway, I want all of them to be together down here, and then what I'll show you right over here, sorry about the tripod there, but here are the babies. You can see them in there, they're just resting, uh, and basically, that's the heating mechanism right there. I got it very low right now because they're, they got most of their feathers in. Um, they're, they're all eating off of the trough right here, which is excellent. I, I'm still using that watering system inside because when I transfer them into the large permanent home on Sunday up here, uh, they'll, they'll figure out the, uh, the nipple situation. So there's seven in there. So far they, they all appear to be female, but I'll know for sure Sunday when I pull them out. And then I will clean that brooder up also. So here are my pearl quail, and I've got five of them up here. I got, I believe it's one, one rooster to five of the females. We always get five eggs that roll out here. And then down here, I have a Texas AMN or a white one, Jumbo, from our original hatching back in March. She lays almost every single day. And she normally lays around noon, or one in the afternoon. And this is the mean hen. That's why she's all by herself, because every time I try to put her with any of the other quail, she uh, tries to pick at their face. And like she's something, like she's some elite person. So when I transfer these birds here and get them out of their sections, I'm gonna put them in the little makeshift thing that I made right there. I'm gonna take the mean hen and the Texas A&M hen, and I'm gonna put them in also and see with what happens and how they adapt to each other uh, so I can, uh, because I want to clean this also, and I want to be able to transfer this, but I got to do one section at a time, because uh, the only case that I've got, not case, but, but this type of a system, I only have one of these to transfer all the quail. So, got to take turns. So, that's the game plan. And uh, I guess I will videotape briefly some of the procedure. I'll make it brief and quick because this is now getting elongated, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so take care, God bless, and uh, thank you for watching here at the Sparks Family Homestead. Bye-bye. Okay, the game plan is to get uh, Harper. We named him Hopper because, excuse me, Hopper, because we had to fix his uh, curled nails when he was born, he, she, because we thought he was a she, or she is a he, but it's a female, and uh, she, she did great. So I think I'll do her first. Oh, she's got, she's got a poopy on her. That's an easy fix to get that off her toe. But she's a good, she's a good girl. Take a look at that. Yeah. You know the, the saying, a boy named Sue? 
Well, this is Hopper, who's a female. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put her with the other ones. Okay. And the last one, the mean one. I haven't named her because I've been tempted to, you know, but she lays eggs, so I can't complain yet. This is what a mean one looks like. You would never know. Pure deception. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Can I get this? Uh, no. Here we go. So that's it for the moment. I'm going to... Uh, Let's see if I can move this over here. That section there, I'm going to unplug the electronic lights system there, take the watering mechanism. I have an auto automatic watering thing up there. And uh, I hope to take the whole thing off. It came with rolling casters. I'm going to put those on underneath because I want to attach both sections ultimately and uh, put the four sections on top of each other. And so that is what I'm planning to do, okay? So until the next video, okay? Take care and God bless. Okay, I just wanted to uh, show you with what I've done here. This top pops off, okay? You see that? And I'll be able to take that section over there eventually and to attach it onto here. And we had these extra buckets that elevated up the, uh, this water system here. This is actually from hatching times, but I went to Lowe's and I got and went to their uh, garden section and I just created this detachable water, water system here. So I was able to just to turn this so it's off. This is the off position here, turn horizontal, and uh, was able to detach it, empty it. I'm just setting it there. See how dusty? <laughs> That's from inside the garage. And this is really dirty up here. This is all going to get cleaned up now, and I feel good about it. I just, uh, I've got sort of a mess. Sorry about looking at all the mess, but I want to make this look like it was brand new, like I had just purchased it, and I'm going to do that right now. But I just wanted you to see with, with the watering tank up there, and I attached it there, and it went across to the watering nipples on the inside of each of the cages there and that has been just awesome i've never had one issue at all with this with their system just have to make sure that the uh, water level never gets below where the water drains out of the the two and a half gallon container so anyway i just wanted to uh, show you that and they don't know what <laughs> what's going on it's crazy. They don't realize they're all going to be family, or they better be family, and they better behave. Um, and we'll see how all that, that works out here. So anyway, I, got, I want to work quickly here because I don't want them to be stuck in this, this scenario very long. I just want to do a, a quick showing here of, uh, of the pans that I use and uh, where I'm at right now with this cleaning process. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I just, I use uh, from Tractor Supply their pine shavings. I don't, I, I like the pine shavings because I like the smell of the pine and then plus uh, it, it will go, it will create compost eventually. Uh, you never want to put quail poop, you know, in your planter beds unless it's had time to compost. And uh, it can do that with the pine shavings. But, for the moment, uh, this year I haven't really even been doing any composting. So this this is an oil pan that I that I get from AutoZone. It fits beautifully under these hatching time cages, and it actually extends beyond, you know, beyond what it's supposed to do. The you know you get you get the plastic ru uh, like rubber made uh, poop pans from uh, hatching time, but they only go to the very end. With the awesome thing with these metal uh, oil pans 
is that it fits perfectly under their cages and it extends outward. So if any poop happens to also roll out or whatever, it will, it will capture on, on this and it won't go into the feeding trough below, okay? So that's another reason why I like it. So anyway, both pans are out and I'm now gonna take this off and uh, taking, take the feeding trays off also, of course. And I will, I don't have a power sprayer, so I'm gonna just turn on the uh, water hose full blast. And this will be the first wash since March. This is September 23 today. Uh, beautiful Friday, late morning. Actually, it's exactly 11.30 in the morning right now. And uh, it's gonna get his first washing. And when you look at it, it's not bad. This is months and months, several months, of never been washed, and look how clean it is. Well, it's not really clean, but there's no buildup of poop or anything like that. So a little bit here and there, maybe in the corners, but um, my birds are very clean. They have incredible food and purified water. I spoil them, okay. So just wanted to share that. <laughs> okay, until the next one. Bye-bye. I just want to show my mess. It's a mess. That's the top of the brooder cage. Uh, there's the baby chicks just sort of like freaking out. So I put them over on the side so I can work. That's where I have the their watering container. There's There's the cage that I'm going to hose down here pretty quick and uh, yeah it's dirty I put the these are metal and I use zip ties to put them on the sides and on the back because if you own quail you know they're messy and uh, they like to throw their poop around or they, they poop on the sides and it gets all over and so and these are perforated or they, they are pre-cut for holes uh, Walmart sells them and they're awesome. I only I was under two dollars for each one and It has been awesome. It has saved me so much labor and cleaning and everything and So so I, I put I lined them up in the back on zip ties on each section and I did it on each section on each side and uh, Doesn't stop at all, but it's probably stops over 90% of that mess so, boy, do I got my work cut out <laughs> to clean that baby up. And that this is where I'm going to be putting the rollers on. The, actually, the, the rolling uh, mechanism that these cages came with, I've never really put them on as of yet because I, I put them on the tables there so they'd be more easily acceptable, uh, accessible, so I wouldn't have to bend to, to look at them down below. I wanted a more or less uh, eye level. And it's been great for my wife and I. But now we're going to do the wheels because we have the babies and they need a space and we're, we're just redoing everything here. So their day has been d interrupted as well as mine. <laughs> Didn't think I was going to do it all today, but the weather is awesome. And it's so cool outside. I just, I know you can't see out that window, but it's uh, breathtaking outside. Okay, that's all I wanted to show at the moment. Oh, and there, there the babies are right there. It's still in the brooder. Uh, they probably don't even need the heater on anymore, but I'll plug it back in as soon as I clean up the mess here. Okay, so uh, there's my tripod. And uh, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Well, here it is. After uh, four o'clock, going on five o'clock. And wow, what a cleanup job and restructure and re uh, pr probably better said uh, reorganization here so i'm still in the garage it's, uh, as i said earlier it's been a beautiful day outside but i've been mainly inside but at least it's cool and it's not that heat and the high humidity that we've had this this past summer all the way up till the last couple days actually but wow what a relief uh, weather wise out here so it made my job pretty Hey, Arkham. Ar Arkham is my German Shepherd, and he's sticking. 
I got to show you with what I what I did, and uh, so it's totally different than what we had before. It's it is clean. The birds seem to be extremely happy. In fact, they all have laid eggs already. So so the turmoil of re reorganizing, uh, cleaning up their cages, and and drying it out, and re reestablishing the lights in all the sections there. And that all worked out really well. And uh, fresh food, uh, redid the whole uh, water system, irrigation, <laughs> irrigation for the birds. And, uh, well, everything looks good. So here you go. This is the final. And uh, I've got six of the uh, Egyptian jumbo quail down there at the bottom. And... Uh, so they are doing very good and then i've got the pearl and so basically this is the egyptian here and then this section here and there's no sections excuse me there's no sections so they have total freedom to go from one end of the of that uh, section to the other and uh, so they're doing very well and then uh, hopper the Texas AMN bird laid an egg <laughs> uh, and uh, he's back or she is excuse me she's back in her domain and uh, I hopefully loving every moment of it and the uh, the Falby uh, birds I didn't name those earlier they're right next to uh, Hopper and uh, looks like they laid one egg and I'm still waiting for one more and so we should be getting 13 eggs today. So I'll just do a, and this top section here is totally clean. And you can see the light is on and clean bottom. And it's all set for the babies on Sunday when uh, they, they turn officially three. And then I'll clean the brooder up and put that away for the time being. And uh, that's Hopper's egg right there, almost pure white. And the Falby, did they lay another egg? No, not yet. Sometimes it gets caught up underneath and there's just a little nudge and it will roll out. These all rolled out. And uh, wow, look at the uh, uh, pearl eggs. <laughs> they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the uh, jumbo got one, two, three. I'm still waiting on another one. So if I count these right now, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I'm expecting another egg to come out of here. And that may not happen until uh, later on tonight. Sometimes they wait until the lights go out after eight. Hey, Arkham. <laughs> Arkham is wanting. Actually, we should have another egg down here. We should have four eggs down here. If there was four, then be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ah, I'm losing it. Anyway, we'll just see as the day goes on. So the birds are happy, and uh, I'm happy. I'm tired. That was a lot of work and hosing it down and but it was awesome to see all the the months and months of build up of poop and stuff uh, just washed away because of that ABS plastic and these cages hold up really well I have nothing but uh, wonderful uh, praises you know for hatching time and uh, with what they do so uh, <clears throat> very happy and uh, we should be fine until uh, we, we see the need to do another major hatch and that will be based on the need. So because I've got, and I'm, I'm going to walk over here, I'll show you. Okay, well, I accidentally cut off here, but anyway. I just put the brooder on the, the workbench because today is Friday, so they're in there. They're doing so good. I got seven females. I'm pretty sure they're all females. Uh, I'll verify that on Sunday. 
uh, this coming Sunday, that is. They'll be three weeks old and they'll be, actually I probably could transfer them right now, but I'll wait a couple more days. And uh, they're doing good on feed and they got water and so I'm happy and they seem to be happy. So if, if, if they're all seven and then I, then I get over here and I get 13, well, 20 some eggs a, uh, a day, that's a lot. So uh, they, uh, Turnix quail start laying anywhere between six to seven, sometimes eight weeks. Uh, my luck has been within six weeks, they all start to lay. That's been the history so far. From birth to six weeks, they start laying. And uh, for, for meat, I normally wait until oh, 10 to 12 weeks. And uh, I've only done like eight birds for meat. And uh, quail are absolutely delicious and extremely nutritious and healthy for you. But uh, I'm focusing more here on our little homestead uh, for eggs right at the moment. So thanks for watching. God bless you. And until the next one, okay, take care. Bye-bye.